This is an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar covering the new features in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, this is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll showcase two new features in Motion 5. One of the new features in Motion is what's called the Stroke Filter. Now what I have here is an animation, could be a still or animation, makes no difference, but the key point is that it has an alpha channel. An alpha channel describes that which is opaque and that which is translucent and that which is transparent in the object. This is critical because the Stroke Filter looks for the edges of the alpha channel. To apply it, select the element that you want to apply the effect to. Go to Filters, go down to border, and in border, select Stroke. The Stroke Filter applies a stroke, a solid color stroke, to the edges of an alpha channel. And to be able to adjust it, go to the Inspector, go to Filters, and there's Stroke, and we can change the colors. And we can select any color that we want. Let's pick a blue. We'll work with that. And we see that we now have a solid color stroke around the edges of an object. Now, this is not necessarily subtle, which is okay. Sometimes you need something that's pretty bold and, and electric. But there's more we can do with this. We can change the width by grabbing the slider and making it really wide or really thin. I'm going to stay with 10. But things get more interesting when we change the stroke type from color to gradient. Now our stroke changes color depending upon whether it's at the beginning, the middle, or the end of the object. We can pick other gradients. For instance, here let's go with when it's got multiple colors in it, a purple to a pink to a whatever that third color is. <laughs> this is why I don't do fashion. Or we can pick something a bit chiller. Well, let's look at this a little bit further. If I grab the threshold and pull the threshold down, right now it waits until the alpha channel is at 50%. Now, as I pull it down, notice how it extends back into the tail that's dragging behind the end of this object. The border does not change, but how far back it goes on the alpha channel does. Things get, let's just pause this for a second. We can see that it's bright blue here and fading into pale blue, just like we have here. Things get even more interesting, however, when we change this from a gradient to an outline gradient. What an outline gradient does is instead of having the gradient go the length of the moving object, it starts in the middle of the moving object and moves out. There's all kinds of things that we can do with this new stroke filter. It's part of the latest release of motions. It's in a filter border category called stroke. But there's another feature that I think is even more interesting. We now have 3D objects inside motion. Now this is a rock. We find them by going to the library. There's a new category called 3D objects. And we can see what they look like here. We've got basketballs and bowling balls and cones and coffee cups. I decided to pick a rock because I don't get to work with rocks very often. This is a full 3D shape. If I select the rock here and click on the 3D transform tool, I can rotate this in any direction that I want and look at it. I can't create this shape. The shape has to be created in a Cinema 4D or a Maya or some other 3D authoring program. I can't create the shape, but I can work with the 60 shapes which are inside motion already, or I can import USDZ forms with no problem. I change the color. I'll select the color filter. Let's go to Inspector and say, let's just change the color of this rock. So I can colorize it the same as I can any other object. Pick that. And then I added a spin behavior. I can add a second spin behavior. So I can get some really complex tumbling moves. So I'm in control of the animation. 
Motion will accept and display the 3D shape and allow me to position it either stationary or movement however I want. Then I can animate it using behaviors or keyframes as much as I wish. These two features are new with the latest release of Motion and I wanted to show you both before we move on to Final Cut. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 292. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We've updated multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.